So what is a lien on a house? Basically, it's a homeowner that owes somebody some money. And we're going to cover that today. I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible. Hey, it's me, Gerald, an active real estate agent and investor. And I'm all about helping others with what I've learned and continue to learn since 2007. So if you're researching or need help selling or buying a house without feeling pressured, then you come to the right place. Make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to get more videos just like this when they come out. Okay, so the homeowner knows about the mortgage. So they make a monthly payment. Now somebody else they owe, which is more than likely they know they owe them, but they didn't realize they could put a lien on the house. That's where this comes into play. Now believe me, the, the person has probably already tried to collect the debt and they'd rather have the money and rather get paid than going about putting a lien on somebody's house. So these liens are due because the homeowner doesn't pay their bills. So how does this tie into selling a house? Liens are typically recorded at the county records, but check it out because it'll probably be easier for me to, to show you. Okay, so this is a quick illustration uh, of a mortgage lien. I know a lot of y'all probably already know how this works, but bear with me, I'm gonna show you how it all ties in with the other liens as well. There's a, again, there's a lot of moving parts, but right now we're just gonna deal with, with the mortgage lien. In this example, we're gonna use a $100,000 house that Henry bought a, about a year ago, and he put $20,000. He was working with Larry, the lender, that fronted him $80,000. This is what we call an, an 80-20 loan. So when Henry closed on this house to purchase it, he, he sent the $20,000 to Tom, Tom, the title guy, this is the title company, and Larry sent the $80,000 to the title company as well. But Larry's got a lot of skin in the game. How does he know Henry's gonna pay him off? Well, Larry created another document. It's called a real estate note, also known as a mortgage lien, all right? And he's gonna have Henry sign this document. What that does is that, that attaches this property here to that lien as collateral. So in the event that Henry can't pay, Larry's gotta have some kind of recourse to come over here and, and uh, take the house over so he gets money back. Now once all that money gets over there, Tom gives all that money to the seller, whoever's, whoever they're buying that house from. So once this lien is signed by Her or Henry, Tom the title guy will take this lien and record it over here at the county records. Again, the county records is public records. So it's there for anybody to see that Henry still owes Larry $80,000. That lien can only be released by Larry. So Larry probably ain't gonna release it until his money is paid, until he gets all that money. All right, uh, so we're gonna keep this kind of simple. Let's say Henry pays everything off over time. What happens is Henry doesn't owe Larry any more money. Larry creates another document. It's called a release of lien or, or something similar. That gets filed over here as well at the county records. So as far as Larry's concerned, this document, what that does is lets everybody know that that mortgage lien has been satisfied. Henry doesn't owe Larry any more money. As far as Larry's concerned, there is no liens. That's, that's just Larry though, okay? So now, say Henry wants to sell it to Bob the buyer. Bob the buyer works with his own, with his own title company. Or it could be the same title company, it doesn't matter. But the first thing Tom, just title company, is one of the first things he's gonna do, he's gonna come up here and check at the county records, among other places. And when he checks with the county records, he's gonna notice this release of lien. He's gonna look all around there and everything's gonna be good. There is no other liens, nothing's preventing him. Uh, he finds out that Henry does own it free and clear. He's gonna run him up a, a title insurance policy to back him up. Bomb the buyer is happy. He's getting a house that's free and clear. Maybe he's paying cash for it. Well, what happens when Henry wants to sell before Larry is, is paid off? Let, let, let's, let's run it that way real quick. Okay, real quick, if you, if you get value of this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. And more importantly, if you know this information can help somebody, make sure you share this video with them, all right? Thanks. Okay, so we're gonna redo this a little bit. Uh, we still have the mortgage lien in place. Remember this lien attaches to this property over here, all right? This was previous 80,000 and 20,000. That's kind of old from the previous transaction. All right, so Bob the buyer comes to buy the house from Henry. Henry has not paid Larry off all the way yet, but he's still gonna buy it, say for $120,000, all right? He's got a little bit of equity built up and he's paid him off a little bit, but not all the way. 
Tom Talagas is still going to come over here and check the county records. Henry didn't let Tom know about everything that he's supposed to let him know. So he finds this lien. That's one thing. And, and that's kind of expected if somebody has their house at financing. So what he's going to do, he's going to get with Larry, the lender, with, with Henry's permission. And he finds out he still owes him $70,000. What he also finds out is he found a second mortgage for $30,000. Henry, didn't, Henry forgot to tell him that he took $30,000 more to update his house. He also found a $10,000 mechanics lien. So Tom asked Henry, what, what happened? Well, there's $10,000. What's a mechanics lien? I don't know. It's $10,000. Well, that's, that's the money that I was supposed to pay for a roof, but the roofer didn't do his job right. Henry got a new roof. You roof for 10K. But he didn't pay him because he wasn't happy and they had some kind of disagreement. A lot of times when you get work done to your house, you'll have a big contract, a lot of paperwork to make you sign, all that kind of stuff. Henry didn't realize that he was given the roofer permission basically to put a mechanics lien on the house. So now the roofer put a $10,000 uh, mechanics lien. So now he's got $70,000 on the first mortgage. He's got $30,000 on the second mortgage. Henry said that I thought that would have gone down by now. I've been making payments on it, but he didn't realize it was an interest only loan. So the principal remains the same. So you got 70, 30, and 10. That's 110K. Can he still close for $120,000? He should be able to, depending on how many, how much it's gonna be fees and closing costs and taxes, commission. But just say he's got 110, so he's got $10,000 to work with. Say Tom worked everything out. Let's say $9,500 in taxes, uh, mission, fees, all that kind of stuff. So Henry walks away with $500 after closing and he's good. But what happens if the market value of that house drops and he didn't realize all that was going on and now it's 100 and he owes 110. Okay, so he owes more than the house is worth. Now Henry's in a position where a lot of people call it's upside down with this house. He owes more than what he can get for it. Can he still sell it? Well, uh, technically, yes, he still can. But he, Henry's got to come out of his pocket to, to get rid of that uh, the debt. And or work with his creditors to eliminate this debt. Maybe he can work something out and get a deal with them. Now, there are times that somebody has made a mistake. Say the new roofer, Henry did pay him off. Maybe he just forgot. The roofer just forgot to go and... and and put a release of lien on that. Then all he's got to do, then all the roofer's got to do is just release the lien. And there's $10,000 saved. Okay, the mechanics lien that Henry knew about, in other words, he knew that he owed the roofer some money, uh, but he didn't realize that the roofer could actually do that, put that lien on the house. That probably came from a contract that Henry signed. A lot of times we would get somebody to come work on the house and we get this, all this paperwork and this contract to sign and we don't read it. But the roofer is probably just enforcing that contract that he signed. So yes, mechanic liens are usually from contractors, you know, if you had work done on your house, but there are other types. In the first example, if Henry paid off the house completely free and clear, he still has to pay real estate taxes. Now, if he fails to pay those real estate taxes, eventually somebody could probably put a lien on for real estate tax, or call a tax lien. Judgments is another way you could, that could attach to a property. If Henry got himself in some kind of legal situation where he's arguing or they're trying to work something out legally, well, the judge can actually order a, him to pay and put a judgment on him. And that could actually go to the, to the uh, property if he does not pay that person that he ordered to pay. Maybe he thought it was gonna go away. But when Tom went to the title work and company to look at the title, he found that judgment. Another big one is IRS liens. They don't play. They come to get whatever. These liens work in the same way they at, because they attach to your property and you can't get rid of them unless you settle with your debtors. Now, as we're wrapping up, these liens are more involuntary. You knew about them, probably didn't realize they could actually attach to your property. And that makes a difference between these types of liens and your mortgage lien where you know you're getting the debt. So if you plan on selling, the buyers will usually submit a contract and request that the seller pay title. It's not mandatory. The reason is some say the seller, that the seller should be responsible to ensure that there is that they are passing good title to the, to the buyer. But if that being the case, then why not the seller go ahead and start working with the, uh, a title company? You can shop around their prices and start looking into your title work to get all that behind you so you'll know that you're coming in with a with clear title when you do get a contract. 
Now I have a quick question for you. What is your biggest concern when it comes to selling your house? Now let me know in the comment section below. The community, you might get some other answers. They may be able to help you overcome those concerns. As always, feel free to contact me. And the best way is to text me. Contact information is on this page or down in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.